times. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So last time we've looked at the reactions of phenol. Okay, so phenol, since it has two in a way, you can, you can see it as having two functional groups. Um, the first functional group is the OH group, uh, and the second one is the arene, the benzene ring. These two are very different um, functional groups. So phenol can have reactions that are similar to alcohol because of the OH group, um, or it can have a reaction similar to benzene because of the benzene ring. Last time, uh, we were looking at some of the reactions of um, phenol on the OH group, which enables, uh, which, ma uh, which makes phenol act like an acid. Okay, so uh, phenol is, an, is a weak acid, as you already know, because of the um, extended delocalization towards the lone pair of oxygen, where the anion is stable. Therefore, more ions form, more ionization, therefore more acidic. Okay? Uh, the first reaction uh, was phenol with base, sodium hydroxide, to form salt and water. Phenol with sodium metal to form salt and hydrogen gas. So this is very uh, familiar uh, as an acid metal reaction. Um, and then we looked at the reaction of phenol in the benzene ring. Okay, so phenol can undergo halogenation, okay, but uh, the only difference between phenol and benzene is that uh, phenol's ring is very electron dense, uh, very high in electron density. Okay, benzene is already high in electron density above and below the plane, but phenol it is even more because of um, the electron donating effect of the hydroxy group of the OH group. So for the reaction of um, phenol with bromine, you do not need a halogen carrier or a catalyst as you would do in benzene. The reaction is also, uh, it involves tri-substitution. That means three substitution happens in one go. Three of the hydrogen in the ring is being substituted with three bromine atoms. Uh, so you form a 246 tribromophenol, which is, which has an appearance of a white precipitate. So that's quite characteristic. Um, another observation that you would see is the bromine that is usually orange or brown in color uh, will turn colorless. Okay, so that shows that the bromine has gone to hydrogen bromide. So HBr is colorless. Um, phenol, just like benzene, can also undergo nitration. Uh, again. Because phenol's ring is so active, as uh, activated, um, you don't need a catalyst and you don't need to heat it to a certain temperature. Okay, for benzene, you need to heat it at a certain temperature, which is 55 degrees Celsius, and you need a catalyst, which is concentrated sulfuric acid. For phenol, no need the special conditions. At room temperature, is fine, uh, and. Uh, depending on the strength of the nitric acid that you use, if you use a dilute nitric acid, a gentler reaction will happen well, where mono substitution happens. Um, and as you know, OH group activates the 246 position. Okay? With the concentrated nitric acid, tri substitution will happen where all the 246 positions will be occupied, will be substituted by the uh, nitro group. Okay, so today is a new reaction that we're going to look at. It is still uh, the reaction in the aromatic ring, in the benzene ring. Um, sorry. Okay, so this is the reaction of phenol with diazonium salts. Now, diazonium salts is this uh, structure here. Okay, so it will be a little bit slower because I am using my laptop not my ipad so this is a diazonium salt a diazonium salt is made up of an anion okay uh, diazonium chloride so cl minus is your uh, anion okay cl minus is your anion and is and the rest is your diazonium cation okay diazo uh, azo means um, nitrogen so you have two nitrogen okay um, 
another thing that you need to notice about this nitrogen is that uh, lost my mind. Um, that it has a triple bond, okay? Uh, nitrogen with a triple bond and triple bond and plus Cl minus. Now, strictly speaking, that positive charge should actually be on this nitrogen, okay? Because that nitrogen is the one that has four bonds. And as we all know, nitrogen is in group 15. Uh, uh, sorry, nitrogen usually form three bonds, okay? It can form four bonds uh, in the next topic you will see, but with a positive charge, okay? So that nitrogen with that positive charge, here, here this nitrogen should have the positive charge. But I guess here, uh, you know, it's just showing that the positive charge belongs to the whole uh, cation, okay? So this is a diazonium chloride. Uh, it is a salt. It is made up of cations and anions. It can react with phenol, okay? But under certain condition, you need it to be in under alkaline solutions. So that's where your sodium hydroxide comes in. And it needs to be in a cold condition. So anything between um, 0 to 10 degrees Celsius, okay? So you can just write down below 10 degrees Celsius or if you write down 5 degrees Celsius, that's fine, okay? So what happens is that uh, this is called a coupling reaction, okay? A couple. So that's quite self-explanatory. When you couple, you are connecting uh, two molecules together, okay? So uh, this nitrogen triple-triple bond will couple or will uh, form a bridge, if you want to see, uh, if, if you like that word, it forms a bridge between the diazonium salt, original molecule, which is on the left, and the phenol molecule on the right, okay? So this is one of the reaction of, um, of phenol. This is something new for you. This reaction is called a coupling reaction. Please take note that the nitrogen now has two bonds only instead of triple bonds in the original molecule. So a coupling reaction is a reaction that uh, connects um, your diazonium ion with your phenol molecule, okay? So this is what we call a um, diazo dye. You know the dye that you use, um, the, the colored dye, okay? So this is one of the active molecules of the active chemicals that is present in dye, D-Y-E, okay? Uh, right, so as you know, phenol, it activates the two, four, and six positions. So if I just circle the two, four, six position, okay? However, if you notice that this position is the fourth position, Usually in a coupling reaction, they happen on the fourth position, okay? Why not the two, why not the six, right? Because if you imagine attaching another, if you attach another ring here, it will be crowded, okay? Um, so we try to minimize the crowd. We try to put uh, this um, diazo bridge as far as possible from the OH group, okay? If the fourth position is blocked, then only they go to the two or the, the sixth position. So in a way, its first choice is position number four. Okay. Other products, sodium chloride and water. Okay, moving on. Uh, so the diazonium is acting as an electrophile here. So if the question asks you to draw the mechanism, you know what to do. Um, the electrons from the benzene ring attack the positively charged nitrogen, and then the delocalization break, okay? Uh, the hydrogen on carbon number four uh, will leave. Uh, the carbon-hydrogen bond breaks and donate the electrons to restore the um, delocalized system, okay? This product is called a 4-hydroxyphenyl azobenzene, okay? Um, this is called a benzene diazonium chloride. So the chloride there is just the anion. The one that you're interested in is benzene diazonium ion. So that's the one with the N triple bond and with a positive charge. 
Okay, so in a coupling reaction, the nitrogen atoms are retained. You don't lose the nitrogen atom. You lose the chloride ions because, well, in solution, they will, they will separate anyway into ions, okay? Notice that the coupling takes place in the far position opposite the oxygen, far position of the phenol, which is this. This will always be the case unless the far position is already occupied. So your observation would be a yellow-orange precipitate or sometimes yellow orange solution. So this is the reason why we have this molecule as our dye because um, the color of this product is really, really bright. So it's, um, it's useful if you want to use it for paints. Um, yeah, that's the only thing that I can think of, uh, the uses of dye. Azo compounds, these two benzene rings are linked by a nitrogen bridge so we call this a nitrogen bridge remember the nitrogen bridge is a double bond but your starting material is a triple bond and triple bond and with a positive charge <clears throat> okay the next one so that's the last reaction of phenol phenol with a uh, diazonium ion okay um, you may be wondering how do we form this diazonium salt okay it is interesting because this diazonium salt is unstable it is unstable at room temperature that means um, if you know if you don't have this 10 degrees celsius condition this diazonium ion will decompose okay so um, this is actually more related to topic uh, not the one after this but the topic after carboxylic acids. Okay, so after phenols, we will be doing carboxylic acids and then nitrogen containing compound. Right, um, let me just clear this first. How do we produce the, uh, the diazonium salt? Okay, so this is probably a little bit relevant for this topic, but it's fine because it gives you an introduction. We will revisit this section again in the next one because the azonium salt is actually not uh, phenol it's not a phenol functional group but it does react with phenol that's why it appears in this topic and also i just want to uh, mention this to you twice um, so that you you know you remember because it's not a common reaction okay so phenylamine uh, is your benzene with an nh2 group this one okay this structure is phenylamine you have not met that yet okay it's an amine um, that has a benzene ru benzene ring attached to it so it's c6h5nh2 so uh, when phenylamine react with nitrous acid okay not nitric acid uh, i mean it is nitric acid but it's the nitric three acid okay the normal nitric acid that you use is a nitric five acid Okay, so nitrous acid has a formula of HNO2. The normal nitric acid that you use is HNO3. So make sure you don't get confused. Okay, uh, nitrous acid is unstable. That means you cannot buy it from a supplier in a bottle, HNO2. No, you have to make it on the spot. Okay, when you need the HNO2 in that reaction, you need to make it inside the test tube. And this is what we call in situ, okay? You've come across this term in situ. Um, basically, uh, it is made on the spot inside that reaction uh, bottle, whether you use a test tube, whether you use a flask, okay? So uh, first, um, before making the azonium salt, you need to make the nitrous acid first, okay? So this is the equation for the in situ production of your nitrous acid. You need sodium nitrate, no, sorry, sodium nitrite and ANO2 plus hydrochloric acid, okay? You just add this inside the test tube and then it forms the HNO2 nitrous acid. The nitrous acid will react with your phenylamine, okay? And then you form a side product, which is sodium chloride, right? So um, this is the overall reaction for the formation of the benzene diazonium chloride. Okay, do not get, get confused. This is the reaction for the production of nitrous acid, which is one of the reactants you need to produce your benzene diazonium chloride. Okay? Uh, so the overall uh, reaction 
is this is your structure of phenylamine. This is nitrous acid. Nitrous acid does not come in a bottle. You have to make it from sodium nitrate and HCl. Okay, and then you need HCl, which is convenient because you already have HCl anyway to produce the nitrous acid. Okay, so um, let this reaction happen. It needs to happen under uh, cold condition as well. Okay, can you please add to your um, equation? It needs to be cold. Um, how do I? Cold below 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so add that to your equation because if you don't have it as a cold reaction, then as I said, your benzene diazonium chloride will decompose. Okay, so for this reaction, you need it to be cold as well. So can you please add that to your notes? This is also an electrophilic addition, uh, but you don't have to worry about the um, mechanism. Okay, uh, at least not now. Later on, you will you will have a look. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Okay, uh, let me just erase that. Preparation of phenol. Okay, um, now if you want to prepare phenol, it is not as it is not a one step process where you think you can just add. Oh, why don't I just add OH into this benzene ring? Okay, the problem is your OH minus is not an electrophile. Okay, OH minus is a nucleophile, and you know that benzene rings only attract electrophile because benzene ring is already electron rich. Nucleophile is a species that can donate its lone pair, and most of the time, nucleophile will have a negative charge. So, negative charge from the nucleophile will repel your benzene ring, who is already electron rich. Okay, so that's why you cannot see this process as a one one step process. You don't just attach OH minus onto the benzene ring, benzene ring attack and etc. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. So you have to go through all these um, steps, yes, to form phenol. Okay. So let me have a look at your notes. Right. So let's go through it one by one. Um, first, you start with the benzene because that's the easiest. Um, benzene is readily available. Okay, so first you have to uh, let your benzene go nitration. Okay, nitration, you already know this. Concentrated nitric acid, your catalyst is concentrated sulfuric acid and you need to heat it at 55 degrees Celsius. Okay, so then you attach your nitro group. Okay. It looks like, oh, there's nitrogen. Um, I, wanna I want to form phenol, which is an OH. Why is nitrogen there? Okay, hold on. Next is, a the next process is um, changing my NO2 to NH2. This is a reduction reaction. Okay, the reason for reduction reaction, because I am gaining hydrogen. I lose oxygen, okay, I gain hydrogen. So reaction number two is reducing NO2 to NH2. This one you haven't learned yet, but you will learn in the next um, topic. You need tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid. Okay, and then next is NH2 to diazonium benzene diazonium ion you already saw this in the previous slide okay uh, to convert your phenylamine to a benzene diazonium ion you need nitrous acid and hydrochloric acid so to form your nitrous acid you need a sodium nitrate NaNO2 plus HCl okay 
this reaction has to be below 10 degrees Celsius because you want to form the diazonium. Okay. Next, diazonium goes to phenol. How? You make the temperature go above 10 degrees Celsius because above 10 degrees Celsius, this diazonium ion decompose. Okay, it decomposed, it releases the, the two nitrogen uh, atoms as nitrogen gas, N2 here, if you can see. Okay, and then the water from any aqua solution really uh, will attach itself onto the phenyl, uh, onto the benzene ring. Okay. This is only applicable when you have water in warm condition with your diazonium ion. Then only the hydroxy group can be attached. Okay, it is complicated because you have to go through that process until you get the diazonium salt. As I said, diazonium salt is not stable. It doesn't come in a bottle that you can order from supplier. You have to make it yourself. Okay. So how to make phenol from diazonium ion? Easy, you just increase the temperature above 10 degrees Celsius. At room temperature, this reaction can happen. Okay, as long as you have water, okay, H2O, and then the temperature is warm, anything above 10, right? So then the nitrogen is being released as nitrogen gas, N2, and then your hydroxy group will be attached to the benzene ring. Your side product will be HCl, okay? So this is called hydrolysis. As you can see from the equation, um, hydro water lysis. The water is breaking the nitrogen bond, be, uh, between the nitrogen bond and the benzene ring, okay? Right, um, any questions before I move on to uh, your exercise to give you some hints. Any questions? Any slides that you want me to go back to? Yes. Yes. Uh, for reduction of nitrobenzene, mm -hmm. the H, H is belongs to hydrochloric acid. Uh, no. uh, this slide, you mean? The hydrogen yeah. comes from um, a reducing agent, not hydrochloric acid. You use a reducing agent, okay? Uh, so, uh, I mean, the tin and the concentrated hydrochloric acid is the, the reducing agent. So, yes, yes, the hydrogen may come from the hydrochloric acid because that's the only reducing agent that we know, okay? But when we write down the equation, we just write it as uh, square bracket H. You don't have to write down the tin, SN, and HCl because otherwise it will be difficult to balance, okay? So you just write down the general representation for a reducing agent. For an oxidizing do, agent, it's a square bracket O. Uh, do we have to write the conditions above the arrow? Yes. If you write down the... Uh, well, you, it depends on the question. If the question asks you to write down the equation, just write down the equation. But safest to include the conditions as well. Okay. Usually, they will ask you separately, what is the conditions and reagents needed? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. If you don't have questions regarding your topic 17, then that means you are ready to do um, the exercise. Uh, let me just pause my... Okay. Uh, so for your homework, I want you to do... Uh, question one. So let's have a look at question one quickly. Um, basically, you have to uh, determine whether this molecule that you have here, which is the phenyl 2 hydroxybenzoate, 
will react with the reagents mentioned here. Okay, so first reaction is sodium. So you have to look at the first thing that I would suggest you to do is to look at the um, functional group. Okay, the functional group that you have here is that OH, which is phenol. Okay, it is not an alcohol because that OH is attached to the benzene ring. Okay, so I wouldn't call it an alcohol. Um, and then the other, uh, you also have a aromatic ring, an arene or a benzene. That's your second functional group. And your third functional group is COOC. So that is an ester. Okay. So three things that you need to look out for. Uh, please refer to your uh, AS notes if you need to look at uh, the reaction of ester. Okay. Um, yeah. Arene is fine. A2 star. Phenol is fine. Ester is the only thing that you need to look up uh, on your notes. Okay. Question two. Let's move on to question two because we have eight minutes left. I would want you to do at least three questions. One, two, three. Mm, what question is this? It's question four. Okay. Uh, question two. If you look at step one, you are attaching this structure. Okay. You are attaching an alkyl group. That is an alkyl group. You attach an alkyl group to a benzene. So this process is called alkylation. Please look at your notes, okay, for alkylation. Um, step two is, if you notice, is that this ring, you are breaking all the double bonds, okay? So... Um, I'm not going to say the reaction, but when you break the double bonds into single bonds. Okay, so that's what's happening in step two. Step three, let's use a different color. Step three is you are attaching this. And you start from alcohol, you end up with an ester, C-O-O-C. -O -O -C. I don't know if you can see that, but... That is an ester group. So it's a hint. Alcohol plus something to form ester. Okay? So use that hint um, to help you uh, answer the questions below. Okay? Um, either compound A or compound B reacting with the following reagent. So looking at compound A and compound B. Okay, let's have a look at compound A and compound B. You need to identify the functional group. Always start with identifying the functional group. Okay, so in compound A you have phenol. Okay, uh, the other functional group that you have is an alkyl benzene or alkyl arene. Okay, so uh, actually. I will not add that because otherwise it will be confusing. Okay, so phenol and then there's a benzene ring and then there's an alkyl, alkyl group. In B, compound B, you have, that is an alcohol, okay? That is not a phenol because that OH group is attached to a single ring, okay? It's a cyclohexane. It is not a benzene. So please Note the difference. A, the OH is a phenol. B, the OH is an alcohol. Okay, I hope you can uh, see the difference. Um, what else do you have in B? Well, the normal things, you have alkanes in B. Okay, alkanes is all your carbon, 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 hydrogen, single bonds. So you will use these functional groups to help. Will they react with this reagent? Okay, so please use your AS notes, especially for alcohol and alkenes, okay? So you can see how your A2 um, questions 
will involve a lot of um, AS syllabus. Okay, so that's question two. Uh, question three, the last one that I want you to um, do. Let's see. Uh, methoxybenzene, uh, sorry, methoxybenzene is um, it's not a functional group that you have um, learned. Methoxybenzene, methoxybenzene and okay, so that's all. So basically you just have to um, find a reagent where your phenol reacts with that reagent, but your methoxybenzene do not react with that reagent. Okay, so for this question, you need to find a reaction that is positive with phenol. Phenol but negative with methoxybenzene, okay? What are the functional groups that you have in the methoxybenzene? Well, you only have a benzene ring, okay? That COCH3 is a single bond, this one. Right, so you don't have to worry about that functional group because we have not done that functional group. So you just focus um, on methoxybenzene as a benzene ring. Any questions? So your homework will be question one, two, and three. Questions? Uh, miss? Mm -hmm. For question 2C1. 2C1. Mm -hmm. Do we have to draw example product with a mono yep. substitution or? Sorry? Mono substitution. Ah, mm, good question. Uh, so, well, the hint is A is a phenol, right? Phenol, when it halogenates, they undergo tri substitution straight away. Okay? So you have to look at the uh, tri substitution. But remember this position. So phenol usually takes up the 2, 4, 6 position, right? But this position, the fourth position is not available, right? Do not kick that out, just leave it as it is. So you just use whatever position is available. Two and six. So in this case, position number four is not available. Okay. How about product B? Product B. Um, product B is not a benzene ring. So you have to look at the reaction. Will product B react with alkanes in aqueous bromine or is there a special condition? Okay, so if there's no sp condition mentioned, that means the condition is not there. Will reaction happen or, or not? Okay. And what is meant by pass vapor over? Which one? Pass vapor over heated Al2O2. Oh. Uh, H2O gas vapor, H2 H2OG, okay? With heated aluminum oxide, aluminum oxide is the uh, catalyst. So you have to refer to your AS notes for that. We have less than one minute left, okay? So I think um, the session will cut us off um, anytime now. So if you have any questions, uh, please, um, Ask in the group, okay? If you're shy, you can private message me, right? Okay, assalamualaikum. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, miss. You're welcome. Thank you, miss.